Hello everyone, myself Shushmita Das, a student of Akhimpur College of Veterinary Science, currently in 4th professional year VVSC and age. Today, I shall be discussing about Marek disease. The contents of my presentation include introduction, etiology, mode of transmission, clinical findings, post-mortem lesions, diagnosis, treatment, prevention and control, and lastly, references. Introduction Marek's disease is also called as range paralysis, skin leukosis, neural leukosis, neural lymphomatosis. So, what is a Marek's disease? Marek's disease is a lymphoproliferative, highly contagious viral disease of poultry. It is characterized by T cell lymphomas and enlargement of peripheral nerve. Etiology Gallate alpha herpes virus 2. Susceptible host Chickens are the most important natural host of age 12 to 24 weeks. Quail has also been found to suffer from this disease mostly in ocular type. And experimental production of the disease in quail and turkey has also been reported. Then coming to transmission. Marek disease is transmitted through inhalation of infected material from the environment. The virus can also persist for a considerable period of time in the dandruff of feather follicles. Then in the oral, nasal and tracheal secretion virus can also be present. Then the darkling beetles can carry the virus for several weeks and lastly the disease is not transmitted through the egg that is there is no vertical transmission. Then coming to clinical finding, the first clinical finding of Marek disease is classical form or neural form. The classical form or neural form of Marek disease is mostly seen at the age of sexual maturity that is about 16 weeks of age and at the time of peak laying that is about 30 weeks of age. There is paralysis of legs and dripping of wings. Signs are mostly concerned with the affection of the nerve, that is, the nerve like sciatic of leg, brachia of wings, ciliac of intestine, and vagus running through the neck are mostly affected. Split leg stems is the most usual feature. Mortality rate of in this form is comparatively low. In the second picture, the bird is in split leg position that is the stretch their leg in opposite direction and the next clinical finding is acute or visceral form this form generally occurs in three to four week old birds here the internal organs of the birds are mostly affected birds will show droopiness depression unthriftiness dehydration emaciation and anemia the ovaries of the affected layers and the pullets, they look like cauliflower and mulberry fruit respectively. Mortality rate in this form may go as high as 60%. And the next form is transitional paralytic form. It occurs mostly at the age of 5 to 18 weeks. It is characterized by sudden development of paresis or paralysis of legs, wings and neck. Signs usually disappear within 24 to 48 hours. The next form is ocular form. Blindness develop in the bird due to mononuclear cell infiltration in the iris which causes grey eye or pearl eye in the birds. And the next form is skin or cutaneous form. In this form, there is distinct white nodules are found. And in the extreme cases, it looks as brownish scale. As we can see in the picture, there is brown scale are present. And then next form is muscular form. Both 
Superficial and deep muscles like pectoral muscles are affected. Muscles look lacerless. There is whitish gray and tiny whitish streaks to nodular tumors may be present. Then coming to post-mortem lesions of malignant disease. Firstly, nerves. The affected nerve is thickened two to three times more than normal. Now there is loss of stretchation and glistening appearance of the nerve. Muscles in the muscle there is whitish streaks to nodular tumors may be present. Yellow orange in coloration of muscles and atrophy can be seen. Bursa of fibrosis shows atrophic and there is rarely development of tumor that appear as diffuse thickening. Liver coarse granular in appearance. Bone, there is degeneration of the bone marrow. Ovary shows cauliflower like appearance. Proventriculus is thickened and firm. Heart, it is pale and have single or multiple nodular like tumors in the myocardium. Artery shows atherosclerosis. There is lipid accumulation and presence of cholesterol and calcium deposits in the intima. Skin shows whitish nodule scab with brownish color. Lymphometry lesions can also be found in the lung, heart, mesentery, liver, spleen, bursa, thymus, adrenal gland, pancreas, proventriculus, intestine, iris, skeletal muscle and lastly in the skin. Then coming to diagnosis, it is based on following consideration, firstly clinical signs, then second gross pathological changes, there is neoplastic growth can be seen, bursa, atrophic, brachial, striatic and other visceral nerve are grayish, thickened and edematous loss with striations can be seen, skin appears as reddish. Nodules notice in pectoral, brachial and feather tracts. The next, histopathological changes. There is proliferation of the lymphoblastic cell which are pleuromorphic in nature. Then coming to next test that is laboratory test. In the laboratory test, we can demonstrate tumor associated surface antigen on some individual cell by immunofluorescence then next isolation of the virus by chick embryo inoculation then indirect fluorescence antibody test virus neutralization test agar gel precipitation test heme agglutination test with inactivated tannic acid treated with erythrocyte and then complement fixation test and then lastly intradermal test then coming to treatment, there is no effective treatment for myelic disease but symptomatic treatment can be adopted. Then coming to prevention and control. For prevention of the myelic disease, the procedure includes vaccination, biosecurity and genetic resistance. Vaccination is the central strategy for prevention and control of myelic disease along with strict sanitation to reduce or delay exposure and by breathing for genetic resistance. The most commonly used vaccine include Turkey herpes virus, which is a naturally avirulent milia grid alpha herpes virus 1. Example FC126. It can be given at the dose rate of 0.2 ml subcut at the back of the neck. And then second is SB1 or 301B oblique 1. It is a naturally avirulent gallid alpha herpes virus 3. It can be given at the dose rate of 0.2 ml subcut at the back of the neck. And the last one is CVI988 or RISPAN. It is an attenuated gallid alpha herpes virus 2. It can also be given at the dose rate of 0.2 ml subcut at the back of the neck. It is the most protective commercial vaccine which is currently available. Vaccines can be administered 
at hatch or in ovo to embryo at the 18th day of incubation and the next prevention method is biosecurity in the biosecurity managemental and hygienic measures can be adopted all in all out method of rearing should be followed attempts should be made to rear the chick in strictly isolated manner and the farm should be disinfected with formalin and the house should be kept vacant for around a month following outbreak and here is the references that's all about my presentation thank you